not planar, but 3D shell extrusion. Uh, we're going to call that curved um, plate. I'm going to keep the dimension exactly what it is, working in the millimeters, remember? Uh, that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to start with a um, construction line that is going to set things up for me. Uh, let's see. Just going to go ahead, the horizontal construction line right about here. Well, I'm going to do it this way. And then draw a little arc with uh, through three points. Um, so this is going to be start point for the arc would be here. End point would be here. Uh, somewhere about here would be the line. Is that okay? just creating a hypothetical example and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, dimension this thing which you're familiar with this is 65 make it and draw a line again move that around from here to there then from here to there. Clean this thing up uh, by removing these two guys and dimensioning. Make sure that they're dimensioned OK and this one also dimensioned to the same value. Alright, so 25, 25, 65 and then I'm going to extrude that by a value of maybe 25 and that's what we ended up with. I delivered this part to you and said, I'm going to perfectly weld both flat plates of this thing, and I'm going to apply the uniform pressure load on top. How would you model this? The same way that the engineer has given you this part? Quarter of it, right? And at the same time, you say, wait a minute, if the flat plates are welded completely, fixed, we don't need to model that because that is going to be fully restrained. The degrees of freedom eventually are going to be what? Eliminated from rows and columns of stiffness matrix. So I'm going to preempt that and not include those degrees of freedom to begin with. Okay, so I'm going to break this thing into the multiple uh, parts or create symmetric plane. To begin with, I'm going to create a, um, let's say, datum plane using perhaps three points and let's see here yeah that's good enough so I'm gonna pick this point uh, this point these are right in the middle and this point I didn't pick the third point that one partition the face using the datum plane the first one and now it's picked it I didn't say done. Select the datum plane, this guy, create partition, and there you go. So we made this cut, and I want to cut this whole thing also the other way, right, to create the quarter of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick this point, and pick this point, and pick this point, as you had told me to, and I didn't follow your rule. Okay, so all of these is for me to clean the geometry. Now, uh, hopefully we can practice something else. You have a full geometry, but you really want to create finite element model on a section of this geometry. The section that I'm talking about is only this portion of the geometry. The rest of them are going to be irrelevant to us. You can either start drawing that thing, or somebody has given you the part, and you can try to manipulate the part and go that way. So we start with the materials. Um, let's go ahead and uh, give it an aluminum plate. 
And by now, you know the Young's modulus is 79,000 because we are working uh, in the millimeter unit. Poisson's ratio is 0.33. Sections. This is the important part in this case. You are looking for shell in this case, not solid. Um, we're going to create a section of the shell uh, that is going to have the default value that you see is the thickness. Everything else has to do with other types of elements like composites. Um, here I'm going to give it a value of 2 millimeters for the thickness and say OK. You can call it a thick shell or a thin shell, but we're not going to worry about it because we are going to be using the formulation that can allow for both thin and the thick shell formulations. You'll see in a moment. Then we assign the properties. Assign the section. Now you can take the whole part or I can pick the section of interest that I'm interested in and say done. And the shell section, as I'm doing this, if you have any questions, please holler. Let's create a general static step. So for the time being, I'm simply going to delete this thing. Of course, it's going to complain. Uh, field output, remember in the linear static analysis, we remove <coughs> contacts and strains. I did. So I have to pick pressure, not concentrated force. Continue and pick this face and say done. Ah. On the shell, you have options. It asks you which side of the shell do you want to apply the pressure. You see the purple. You notice the other side is the brown, as I'm rotating that. We want to apply to the purple side. And the value is 200 is a lot. Uh, how about 10? OK, so there you go. Now, if these planes and stuff become too much for you, I'm going to go under View Assembly Display Options under Datum tab and turn off Datum Planes and Datum Coordinate Systems. Make the uh, shape a little bit more cleaner for our observation. Now comes the fun part. First of all, I'm going to do the easy part. That would be the fixed boundary condition. What's the fixed boundary condition? Remember we said that um, we are going to, what, constrain or weld this whole flat face. We're not modeling the flat face. Instead, we're modeling this, that edge of the flat face is going to be fixed. And here we're going to do n cast ray, meaning everything is fixed. Remember, this is a general shell formulation, includes all degrees of freedoms. That's that. Now, remember we made a cut where? Here, across this edge and across this edge here, right? Boundary condition 2. Let me look at the coordinate system. You see the triad here? You are going to apply a symmetry about the x-axis and also a symmetry about what? The z-axis. So let's call this one z-symmetry. We're going to keep it as symmetry, anti-symmetry, and castre, and say continue. Where is it that I'm making the cut? Over here, right? Along this edge. Do you see that red highlighted? Right? That's where we're making the cut. And we're going to say done. Now, z-symmetry is what you want along the axis, rotation about the other two. And we'll say, OK. This is going to be what? X symmetry. Continue. And we're going to pick this edge and say done. What do we have here? X symmetry. You can use the general scheme. Um, let me just do that with the general scheme, since he asked that question. Instead of that, I'm going to use displacement rotation. And I'm going to call that still x sim. And I'm going to pick this edge and say done. Now you see what you have? 
you have all degrees of freedom to choose from. What do I need to restrain? U1, UR2, and UR3, which would be the same thing as what we had accomplished before. And say, OK, there you go. So your boundary conditions have been applied, your load has been applied, and now comes the fun part, meshing. But Abacus always wants to do assembly. We'll say assign on the part and the region. We're really interested in this region, right? We'll say done. Element, hopefully it'll pick the shell as the default. Do you see that? Standard, linear, default is quadrilateral. And since I'm going to use a reasonably coarse mesh, I'm going to uncheck reduced integration. And notice the element description, S4. So we'll say OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and embark on assigning mesh control. Again, I'm assigning the mesh control only the sections that I'm interested in. Um, I'm going to use the quad. I'm going to use structured. Since it's a rectangular shape, curved rectangular shape geometry, and I say OK. Green means that you can do structured meshing. And I am going to seed edges in this case. Uh, seed edges, pick the opposing edges that are similar in shape, and say by number five elements see these two edges that are opposite of one another and I'm gonna make that 10 elements so the total would be how many elements 50 elements you hope now where it does become a problem if you're not careful is right here now you go to mesh this thing watch what happens if you mesh the part don't want to mesh the part, right? You want to mesh a region. So the first thing I want to do is delete the part native mesh. Yes. So instead of meshing the part, I'm going to mesh what? Mesh a region. And I'm going to pick this region and say done. And this is the mesh. Okay. So 50 elements and create the job. Call it solution of sample tutorial. If I can spell things. Okay, and save it one more time and then right click and submit. That's a warning message that you're going to get all the time. If you have part, but you decided to mesh a region, you'll say, yeah. And we're going to look at the results. Now, when you look at the results, it only shows you the portion that you have done the finite element mesh. And I'm going to look at the deformed shape. Holy cow. OK, so that's all right. Superimpose undeformed versus deformed. Uh, notice the scale factor that we're looking at. What is the scale factor? Um, under common option, scale factor is about 9.2. Now, this is von Mises stress. Von Mises stress is always going to be what? Positive, right? So instead of that, I'm going to look at the bending stress. Can you tell me what would be a good representation of a bending stress? Which axis? X-axis, which corresponds to S11 stress component. You're going to say, whoa, hold everything. I have negative values in here. That's the characteristics of a shell. Remember, you defined non-dimensional surface. Then you assigned it a thickness. Guess what happens in the final dynamic model? The thickness, half of it goes above the surface, half of it goes below the surface. So when you're requesting the output, you can request the bottom surface of the shell or top surface of the shell. What do I mean by that? 
Remember this? Top surface, the stresses are what? Tensile, the bottom stresses are what? Compressive. What do you think you're looking at in this case? That should be the bottom stresses, right? How the heck do I know? Let's go on the results and section points. Now if I do top and the bottom, what I want you to see is this. Look at the bottom portion. Notice they're vastly different from the other. Right? Now in this case what you're saying, seeing is that the whole thing is pretty much under compression. At least in the x-axis it is. Right? Now, the top and the bottom, it is important for you to understand that depending on the loading condition you may have, one part can be positive, the other part can be negative. In this case, we achieved everything as negative. And the common mistake, of course, is looking at the von Mises stress and assuming that everything is a positive stress, which is not the case. Because in addition to S11, you also have what? S22. You notice what happens in S22 case now. You have some positive values, albeit not very large positive values. Right? And vastly different between the bottom and the top, again. Do we have shear stresses? First of all, what do you expect your S33 to be? Excellent. Why should S33 be zero? It's a shell element. S12, that is your shear stress. Again, you notice there's a difference between the top and the bottom layers of the shear stress that you need to be aware of.